All right, here are solutions to perfect problem two for math 243. Given a bunch of information and asked to do statistical stuff with it. Um, and in this case, the information we're given is the daily high temperature on a, what, 10 randomly selected days, and how much coffee they sold on that day. So the first thing you want to figure out is which of these variables is your explanatory variable, which we use the letter x for, and which is the response variable, y. Um, the trick, the, what I use to remember that is that um, your explanatory variable is the cause and your response is the effect. So in this case, temperature could cause coffee sales. Maybe on a cold day they sell more. Um, but coffee sales can't cause temperature, right? On a, if I sell a bunch of coffee, that's not going to make it colder somehow that day. So my explanatory variable, x, is temperature. And my response, coffee sales, is y. And now what I'm asked to do is create a scatter plot. The way you can create a scatter plot is first put in all your data. So stat, edit. Type them into lists. Keep track of what variable you put where. My x's are in L2, and my y's are in L1. And then to create your scatter plot, go up to stat plots here, and you go into stat plots. Make sure it's on. Select the type you want. This first type kind of looks like a scatter plot, so we're going to use that. And then your x variables, you got to tell them where they are. Remember, my x variables were in L2, so I hit second and then two, and it says L2. And my y variables are in L1. It already says it, but if it didn't, you could hit second and one, and it would say L1. And then Mark is just saying, what do you want it to use for the dot on your scatter plot? It really doesn't matter. It's weird that it even gives you options. Um, so now we've programmed our scatter plot. All we got to do is look at the picture. And to look at the picture, you can hit the zoom button. And then zoom stat will have your calculator guess what you want your window to be if you're doing a statistical problem, which we are. It's the ninth thing on the list. So you can either just hit 9 or scroll down to 9 and hit enter. And voila, there is your scatter plot. So you can draw your scatter plot. Um, I don't really care how exact you are. I want my x variables to be down here. So I don't know. Be as exact as you want to be. 30, 50, 70, 90. Um, it looks like temperature goes up to 92, so that should work. And coffee sales go up to 60, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. If you want to label these, you can. Temperature, coffee, whatever. And then put in all these dots. You can either just kind of copy it from here. You can go one by one. You can say, when it was 30 degrees out, I sold 62 cups of coffee. When it was 35 degrees out, I sold 38 cups of coffee. 10, 20, 38. When it was 40 degrees out, so just slightly to the right of this, I sold 45 cups of coffee, a little bit more than that, somewhere up there, um, and so on. Does it have to be perfect? No, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm going to kind of just do the rest of it. Ugh, no, I'm going to be exact. I'm a teacher. I'm supposed to do that. Um, okay, so the fourth observation is when it was 52 degrees out, I sold 30 cups of coffee. So a little bit to the left of 50, 30, something like that. 52, I had a 35 day. 35 would be just above that, something like that. Um, 67, I sold 26. So 67, 26. 77, 22. 77, 22. 84, somewhere over here, only 16. 86, only 11. 92, 13. Something like that. Here's my scatter plot, which looks something like this. Um, and then my guess, my estimate for R, I mean, you can't really be wrong with your estimate, although I guess you kind of can. We want this to be negative because there's clearly a negative relationship here. So we want a negative number. And we want it to be pretty close to negative 1 because it looks pretty linear here. They fall in a pretty good line. Estimate of R, I don't know, negative 0.9 maybe, something like that. Um, we'll calculate it later and see how close we are. So I think that's everything from this first bullet point. The second one says an interpretation of the slope and intercept in your LSR model. What that's saying is do linear regression. Go over to calculate, go down to linear regression, and then tell it your x variables are in L2 and your y variables are in L1, if those are where yours are. x variables, y variables. Hit enter, it'll spit out all sorts of stuff, namely your linear regression model. It'll say 
y hat is equal to ax plus b, and a is this negative six, negative point six eh, five. Good enough. Negative point six five x plus b. B is sixty nine point three ish. So here's my least squared regression model, and if I had to interpret all these coefficients, what I would say is this 69.3 means that if it is zero degrees out, I'd expect to sell 69 cups of coffee. Maybe 69.3 cups. And then what this negative 0.65 tells you, I don't know why the arrows, sure, arrows on both sides of the line, says that for every increase, for every one degree increase in temperature, in other words, as our x variable increases by one, we expect our y variable to increase by negative 0.65. For every one degree increase in temperature, we sell um, 0.65 less cups of coffee. Uh, interpretation, LSR model, that looks good enough. A mention and interpretation of R. So what I'm saying here is now I want you to actually calculate R. Look at that, it's already done. R is actually equal to negative 0.9 three, depending on how many decimal places you want to round off to. Pretty good estimate. We said negative 0.9, it's really negative 0.93, which means there is a strong, strong because the absolute value of this number is close to one. There is a strong negative negative because it's a negative number. Correlation. Uh, between temperature and coffee. There's a strong negative correlation. Good enough. Um, a one sentence analysis of the sales on the third, of the sales on the 30 sales on the, wow, that makes no sense. I'm gonna have to rewrite this. A one sentence analysis of that one day where we sold 30 cups of coffee when it was 52 degrees out. So what I'm saying is our x variable, which is the temperature, was 52. And our y variable was 30. I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're saying this day right here, do an analysis of that. Figure out how close that was to what you expected. Specifically, cite the residual. So the way we can figure out the residual is, maybe I should write that first, the residual is kind of what actually happened minus what we expected to happen. Um, what actually happened was I sold 30 cups of coffee. What I expected to happen, well, let's figure out what I expected to happen. My least squared regression model here tells me what I expected to happen. It says that if it's 52 degrees out, I expected to sell negative 0.65 times 52 plus 69.3, 69.3. In other words, negative 0.65 times 52 plus 69.3. Um, what that's saying is I expected to sell 35.5 cups of coffee I really only sold 30. I have a residual of negative 5.5, which means, make some room, I sold 5.5 less cups of coffee than I expected. Um, and I believe that is the end of this guy. I didn't really write it in paragraph form, but hopefully you'll let that slide. I think I hit everything, so that's the end of this problem.